I live here with the cats, 77 of them. So, so this whole yard is fenced in. It just took two months, and now I've got to take it all down and start over. Yeah. So you, you have to move. We have to move. We're going to get killed here. Why is it that you have to move? Oh, so much, Clara, the owner. Tell me your story. The beginning is the owner of the house believes you just give him money and he doesn't have to do anything. So there's no sewerage, he won't fix it. In winter, I didn't have hot water, the geyser exploded. He won't fix that. The whole kitchen is leaking all the time. If you look at the walls and everywhere, I can't open cupboards and drawers anymore. All my stuff in the cupboards are rotting. I mean, if you look under here, this is the whole place right now. Oh. Everywhere. And there's no point in even cleaning it anymore. I mean, look how far away from the kitchen sink that is. Yes. I can't use any of the cupboards. This is terrible. It's very unhealthy. You can't breathe this. It's, it, it, uh, it, you shouldn't be breathing this. Stuff. No. No, it's very unhealthy. And, I mean, all the inside the cupboards, it's full of worms because it's wet all the time. Yes. At Hanapuru's, the whole Mahsan floods in winter underneath and on top. So you're trying to sweep out the water and at the same time it's hitting you on the head. So all the cats get sick and get pneumonia. In summer, they just get heat stroke. And he refuses to fix one thing. And... Um, it was about two weeks ago he cut off my electricity he left me without electricity for six days nothing in the fridge no kitchen. why did he do that because he claims he's rented out extra space at the top he's renting to six people now and his electricity is overloaded and it's leaving his house short so his solution to that was to cut me off and leave me with nothing I, last week I was in court with him twice I got my electricity back Thursday last week. Six days, no lights, nothing. I had to feed the cats with a torch in my mouth. And that's the first one. And then the second one is a neighbor who believes he's alone and I'm alone, so things should be happening. And they're not. And over the months- He harassed you sexually? For months. And it just started getting uglier and uglier where he'd throw his garbage on top of the fencing leave condoms all over my gate, disgusting messages, it just never stopped. Yeah, I've had enough, I'm calling the police. And I took a picture of his number plate, and the next thing he had a spade, and he beat me up and put me in hospital. So it's been getting scarier and scarier. When I called the police, he then sent me messages, now he's going to get the cat. And three times he's opened the fences and let them out and stands on the other side howling like an animal when are we going to get them talking to the dog and thank god right now he's under arrest but we can't be around here if they let him out i said you can't live like this like when you're here you're afraid and when you leave you worried what's happening at home since he cut off my electricity everything in the fridge went rotten so the flies and came I, no, i've cleaned it twice thrown everything away because everything was rotten since the electricity went back on, I, it doesn't matter what I do. It just, I stand at the kitchen, I'm covered in flowers. I can't stand it. I don't know what to do about it. I've cleaned everything. Gail, what's your profession? I'm a tennis coach. In South Africa, I coach some of the best players. One of the guys, Wayne Ferreira, that I coached, made it into the top 10 in the world. He was like really good. Um, it was important to coach there and you know, the people like Trump, Sophia Loren, those kind of people. I knew them when I was playing tennis and traveling. And wouldn't it be nice if some of those people could help? I would like to speak about uh, your health. Oi. <laughs> Oi. Oi. Chloe, you know what? I don't even know right now where I stand. I mean, I know I have the breast, breast cancer and before I had trouble with the neighbor, I was told I have skin cancer and a tumor in my hand and maybe in my thyroid. And with all the rubbish that's gone on, I haven't had time to go back to the doctor. So it's just like, I've got all the pieces of paper in a packet and it's just like, let's try and get out of here, get the cats moved, get them somewhere safe. 
and then please go back and go and see what's going on with me. How do you feel? Do you feel anything? I'm exhausted all the time. But then I don't always know if that's from not being okay or from the stress of everything that's going on. And it's working all day, taking care of a million animals at night, all the street cats. And I think just thanks to my training from tennis, the discipline from tennis, I had a trainer, he taught me, it was my best and worst lesson. Acknowledge the pain and go through it. Do you have pain? So Do you feel pain? Every minute of every day. Where? Well, mainly in my back, my hands, I've got arthritis in my fingers, I've got a disease in my wrist. Now, from where the guy beat me, I've got problems with my leg and in a nerve all the way up. I just like, I don't know, it's just each day which one's worse or, you know. And what do you eat? Um, fruit and if I have money, vegetables. I always have fruit because I need the energy to work. But sometimes that's it. A lot of the time that's it. Are you a vegan? Okay. But you know they're good vegetables. If you had money, you can eat broccoli and cauliflower and all the good stuff. I yes, can't. a lot of vegetables and they're wonderful. And I can't I, you know, I yeah. So if I can, I'll buy like carrots and zucchini. That's like a treat. Yeah. And I have to admit, if I see an avocado tree or something, then one of those and a mango fell off someone's tree the other day, so that was like a treat, you know? Mm -hmm. But then again, it's, if I had a few shekels, I'd rather spend it on them. Yeah, to survive, I mean, I work. I work as much as I can. I'm not looking to sit and do nothing all day. And I don't know. I mean, I haven't had a haircut like in 10 years. I don't need that stuff. But shelter and vet and food. You know? And a job that you have self-respect. That's about it. Yes. And... You know, so many animals, it doesn't even take that much money. I mean, the food, and they're not getting the best food, that's for sure, but food is maybe around four and a half thousand a month. And that's close to 300 lives. I don't think that's a lot of money. No. But for me to earn it, and the rent, and I know no electricity, vet, petrol, car, all that stuff, it's getting impossible. I can't work enough hours. How much a month would you need uh, from others, except your work, and of course you will be always working and so yeah. on, uh, to what, you will need some respite to heal. And, uh, but how much would you need a, a month's help in order to feed them with dignity, <laughs> survive and feed them with dignity and have the vet care and and uh, the medication for you and everything that you need. If I keep going the hours I'm working now, we'll be still going under probably by about two and a half thousand every month. Let's get back to uh, coaching. You would like to uh, have more people to coach, tennis uh, coaching. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tennis was before the cats, and that's my life, that's my home, that's where I'm the happiest, is on a tennis court. So only thing you'll hear me saying, I'm really good. And it makes me happy, I love being out there. And I mean, I know I'm good, I've been imported all over the world. In Germany, in America, I know all the rich and famous people, like the Trumps and Sophia Loren, and all of them. And that, that's home for me. But if it's a choice between that and the cats, it's still no choice. They come first. So they are your do, children. <laughs> yeah, do whatever you have to to make it good for them, but that's good for me also. But luckily, uh, one doesn't exclude the other. No, no. Thank you, Gail.